we'll do our presentation, talk about the program, and then leave it to your questions because those are important for us, and we know that there are a lot of questions out there. So we want to make sure that we give you enough time to ask them, and we get a chance to answer them. The best way to ask this question now, we would have loved to have you guys unmute and talk to us and let us hear you and talk to you directly. But in the interest of time, what we'll do is if you have a question, put it in the chat. And once we are done with this presentation, which will take about 15, 20 minutes, we will go into the chat and look at your questions, read it aloud and then answer them as well. This session is being recorded, so anybody who has joined as well as in case you registered and were not able to make it, you will still get a recording of this webinar. And we do put this on our YouTube channel of the Naveen Jindal School of Management. So again, there is a lot of content there to help you with your questions. Let me get started here as soon as I share my screen. OK, there you go. Well, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. We are very glad that you're here. My name is Gaurav Shekhar. I'm the program director for the Graduate Business Analytics Flex and the online program. I'm also an assistant professor. I'm joined here with my by my colleague, Sylvia Leventhal, who's the program manager for the Business Analytics Flex program. A lot of you end up getting responses from either me or Sylvia. So we are the two people that respond to most of your communication that you send to us on the email. And by the way, the I would like to say this. A lot of those questions are amazing questions. Sometimes we look at those questions and we're like, why did we not think about it this way? But thank you for that, that constant connect that helps us understand you and at the same time also helps us to introduce ourselves or get get to know you better. Now, before I talk about why business analytics at UT Dallas, I want to talk about why business analytics at all. Why is the word gaga about this business analytics or analytics? And everywhere you go, if if there is anything around data or tech, you will hear the word the word analytics. And why suddenly analytics is so hot or you know when I say suddenly I mean the last decade or so people have been jumping into analytics to answer this question well we'll have to go back to the 70s and the 80s and that's when computer systems information systems started showing up in some shape or form companies started using computers you know before the 70s it, computers existed in large government organizations bringing them into small and medium enterprises and the best part was bringing them inside your homes was a major major turn that the you know the way we we work the way we connect uh, that was a milestone it was a cornerstone for i'd say mankind technically now if you think about any software application or any system and this might be a question for you all what is the need for that what's the number one need and the answer to that is data management. You talk about a security application. What does it do? It manages your access. So it technically manages some kind of data. People who are authorized get access. People who are not authorized, they are stopped. You are talking about um, a social media application. What is it doing? It's still managing data, your communication with somebody else, your connection with somebody else. So at the end of the day, the bedrock of any IT system is data. Now, 70s and 80s was an explosion when it came to systems. And at that point of time, all the data that was being generated, the question that was asked later was, what do we do with this? And that's where some of the industry leaders got into looking at patterns, trying to figure out what were these patterns like, what were their hits, what were their misses, and where can they do better? Honestly, if we had that crystal ball, we would want to see how tomorrow looks like so that we can prepare ourselves for that. And and that's exactly what the whole idea behind analytics was. Can we guess or can we with a lot of certainty know how our actions of today will yield results? And because of that, this whole exercise of analytics started picking up in the 90s, early 2000s. But and what, what companies started doing was, yes, experience counts, your hunch counts, but that was not the only thing that they use for decision making. They said, when we have data, why don't we use data to make better decisions? As enterprises, as corporations have grown, a single wrong 
decision can cost you billions of dollars. So the risk significantly improved for these organizations that they were very, very headstrong about the fact that they need to use data to make better decisions. The other thing that happened was, now when you talk about data, you think about computers, you think about IT sector, but today in a digital age, nobody is left untouched by computers. So it's everywhere. You talk about the tech sectors, of course, financial sectors, you talk about real estate, healthcare, oil and natural gas, everywhere you're using uh, technology, which generates data, which requires analytics. That's the simplest way to look at it. Now, as this need has grown, and I would say not grown, it has exploded. What happened was, you know, whenever there is a new need, an organization goes out and asks people to come and train their employees so that they can start learning that, that new skill. And this new skill was to learn the language of data, to do analytics. But the speed at which this need was growing and the speed at which these trainings were happening, they were it was day and night. And at that point of time, you know, the academia came into the picture and said, okay, we'll start our programs. So honestly, uh, business analytics programs have not been very old. In fact, the first one in the US came in the year 2007. And in the next five, seven years, a lot of uh, top universities, they started their own analytics program. And that's where in 2014, uh, UT Dallas also started their program. So we are into our eighth year right now. Now, as I'm talking about the need of analytics, there is another thing. There are, there's a big shortage of qualified and trained professionals who can do analytics. At the same time, another truth of the industry is a lot of organizations feel they are doing analytics, but they are not doing analytics. For example, you can use any data visualization tool to create nice and glossy charts and pictures, but just creating a, a nice chart is not analytics. There's a lot of stuff that goes behind it. And if you're missing that layer, then all you're doing is you're just beautifying the, the way you are presenting your data, not really uh, analyzing it. And that's where people like you all come into pay the picture. And people like us come into the picture who train you. And that's where we need this degree. The reason I spend this last few minutes to talk about this is because starting a degree is a big step. And you should have all the possible answers before you start a degree program because you're going to spend your time. You're going to spend your money. And again, this time and money, uh, you may stop a job and do this full time. You might do this part time. You might have to adjust things around your family. Our, our goal is to help you with all these possible situations and give you the right outlook so that you are able to make the decision that is this for you. The other thing is, in terms of the longevity, this degree is, is one that will have the longest life for any professional. Number one reason, it's a very evolving sector. Even though we have so much that we have accomplished with analytics, it's still a continuously evolving sector. Now, let's say somebody wants to get into the tech industry and they start as an application developer, let's say. The, the, after a few years, your value to the organization is so much that you, you need to expand beyond just role, uh, beyond your role as a developer. So you might be managing people, you might be managing business, you might be managing whatever it is. Uh, and yes, there are other people who could be put into your position as a developer. So again, the lifespan of, of doing something like development or testing or these very specific niche things is much shorter than analytics because whether you are a fresher or you just you know, have a few years of experience or you are a chief executive, you need to know how to analyze your data. Or even if let's say, you know, you, you're a chief executive officer, you might not be creating models and optimizing models, but you need to know, you need to have that ability of knowing what exactly somebody is talking about. So, and, and we, see, we are seeing a lot of these mid -man management level people, senior management level people who are coming back into uh, the universities to get this skill because they're dealing with billions of dollars worth of business and they need to understand how an analyst or a data scientist or somebody who's wrangling this data is coming up with recommendations because it's not that they don't uh, believe that person. 
But again, as I said, the risk is too high and you need to have a, mul a, a you know, a, a team of people with multiple years of experience, you know, across the spectrum to kind of vet those findings or vet that analysis. And that's why everybody wants to learn this. So from a from a usability standpoint, what you're learning today will be relevant to you even 20 years later. And I can't say that for every other uh, degree out there because they all have some kind of a lifespan. And I'm not saying that you can't spend 40 years as a developer, but just understand that as you grow in your profession, your value with your organization immensely increases. Now, why us? Some of you might already have seen our degree program and I'll just uh, show our catalog in a few minutes but there is a lot of flexibility and when i say flexibility here is the number for you half of the degree which is six courses you have a catalog of 70 plus courses to choose from you want to take a course in the morning or in the middle of the day or in the evening we let you choose that what courses you want to choose we let you choose that because after all whatever you're learning here you probably have some idea as to how you're going to fit it into your future. So why, who are we to make that decision for you? We let you do that. We do, we do show you the path, but we, we leave the flexibility to you. Engagement is key because what you're learning inside the classes, we give you the ability to apply it through competitions, through trainings, workshops, and we also give you a lot of chances to have that face time with, it, with the industry professionals and these are not just anybody they are mostly decision makers they are senior people in the senior management they are people who are hiring and who come to UT Dallas they engage with you and you get a chance to talk to them now in a semester on an average just and I'm just talking about R1 program anywhere between 40 to 50 professionals just in one program come and they talk to you and these are people over a 16 week semester 40 to 50 people. That means every week, two or three executives are coming down and they're talking to you. And that's just in the program. Now, we are part of a big school. We've got about 10,000 students there. And there are a lot of different channels through which these executives come. So technically, every week, a student has an opportunity to talk to at least 20 different professionals. And that engagement is needed because that, that not only enriches you, but it also gives you a chance to to interact with people one on one. We are very focused on outcomes as well. So we do a lot of things in the program. We do competitions, events, you know, bringing the industry, doing ancillary trainings, etc. But we also measure them because if these trainings are not yielding the results that you're looking for, then we are not doing justice. And we want to make sure that we we tweak our approach to ensure that you get the best value. As I talked about, we have, it's a 36 credit program. All our courses are three credits each. And uh, 18 of them are core, which means six courses are core classes. And the other six are electives. And you have 10 different tracks in the FLEX program. Accounting, cybersecurity, data engineering, data science, decision operation, financial, healthcare, marketing, social media, enterprise systems. Choose whatever you want to choose. I mean, Honestly, we have Netflixed our degree program. Have you ever gone to Netflix or at Amazon Prime or any of these OTT platforms and have scrolled a lot just to find the best movie for yourself? Why? Because you need to have that ability to choose what you want to watch. And the same thing we do with our program. It's a STEM designated program, which means if employers are looking for STEM designated uh, uh, degrees for their hires, well, it is STEM designated at the same time. It is also uh, for international students this is uh, th this designation helps you with that additional two years of opt on top of your first year we do admit people in all three semesters fall which is august spring jan which is in january and summer which is may and we have applications open right now for spring oh uh, sorry uh, summer 22 and fall 22. We are also the largest business analytics program in the country because of these large number of classes that we can offer. We are the largest. We have a little over a thousand students. The average starting salary is, and despite the fact that we, in the last two springs, 
we graduated more than 300 students, we still hit that average of $100,000. The highest packages that we have seen in the last three years is in the range of 250 to 300K. Uh, we have partnerships with dozens of companies. And when I say partnerships, these are companies that intensively work with us. You know, every week, maybe a couple of times, several times in the semester, they're coming down as judges, they're coming down as mentors, they're coming down as, uh, you know, sponsors for our competitions. They hire interns, they hire full-time people. They are very engaged with us. They serve on our advisory boards. They, they help us in, you know, fine tuning our curriculum. So these are companies who are literally on our speed dial. And there are dozens of them that we, we work with. And these are partnerships and relationships that we have cultivated. And eventually it is you, the student who's getting the benefit of it. High return on investment. Now UT Dallas is ranked number one in the state of Texas in terms of return on investment. And we being one of the top programs within UT Dallas, ours is even higher. So just to give an example, if you take an education loan, you know, fifty, sixty thousand uh, dollars, your institution will give you seven to twelve years to pay it back. Our students are paying it back in two to three years. I mean, I have several students who do it in less than one year, and that's possible because they're making a lot of money out there, and that's why it is possible. And and I'm not saying that they're they just have, you know, uh, they have to cut down on their lifestyles and stuff. They're living comfortably. They're able to support their families if they have to. And at the same time, they are comfortably paying back their loans as well. And we do have uh, some companies. We don't have official partnerships with them, but there are a lot of uh, companies that give out loans to our students right here in the US without a cosigner. And that's a big advantage. Um, in terms of internships, almost 500 to 600 on an average is what we see every year. The average pay has been about $24 in the last five years, but I would say in the last one year, it has grown to uh, between $28 to $30 an hour. We have three different formats. We have the Flex program that has all the 10 tracks. You know, most of the classes are face-to-face -face and online, um, face-to-face -face and about 10 to 15% of them are online. It's self-paced, so you can decide how soon you want to complete this degree. By the way, the program can be completed in nine months if you want to do it two semesters, stack up courses and you're done. Or if you want to uh, take more time, you know, 72 months is the longest. Nobody takes that time. Most of our students complete it in one and a half, two years. Uh, it's a state funded program, which means if you become a TA in the program and you're out of state in terms of your tuition and residence status, you will end up getting in-state tuition. If you get a scholarship in the program, you also get in-state tuition and that's the benefit of being state funded. We have another uh, two different programs. These are smaller programs uh, cohort, which is the MSBA cohort program it has the two tracks data science and accounting analytics. And of course those tracks are there in flex as well, but we kind of carved out this different program. Um, it is self paced. It's not state funded, so it has a flat uh, tuition rate and uh, irrespective of whether you get any assistantship or not, the the in-state and out-of-state doesn't change. And then we have the 100% online program, which has the data science and the data engineering track. Mostly people who are there are working professionals, but it's 100% online. Now, as far as scholarships are concerned, you will need to submit a GRE score or a GMAT score if you want scholarship. However, for admit purposes, GRE or GMAT waivers are available. So once you have applied, you can, and I'll show you the email address in a second. You can email us and get that waiver. Okay, what do we need from you to apply? We need your GRE or GMAT scores. Why we need those is because, you know, we have applicants from all over the world and there are tons of different universities. So there is no way to standardize uh, them and that's why we we look we ask for either the GRE or GMAT scores. But in case you want a waiver, please email jsomgradvising at utdallas.edu. The email is on the screen after you have submitted your application. But if you if you want to go for a scholarship, you must submit your GRE or GMAT. Now you can get a waiver, get an admit, and later send us uh, your GRE or GMAT score and apply for the scholarship. That's also possible. The deadline for May uh, for fall 22 is May 1st. So we need to have your scholarship application as well as your uh, 
GRE or GMATS course, official ones sent to us by that day. Transcripts, we are okay with the unofficial ones while you're applying so that we can make the decision. But after the decision is made and if you're admitted, we would require your official transcript. You get all the time until the start of the semester to do that. In case you need some more time beyond the start of the semester, you know, UT Dallas does gives you some extra time. But remember, before the second semester starts, we will need your official documents. Now you can send, and we don't need your original docs. We need attested copies. Now you can get those attested copies, put them in an envelope, and send it to us. You know, those make sure those envelopes are stamped on the seals as well, and you can mail them. You can even use the Dropbox facility once you come here. I would recommend mail them because, you know, let's say for whatever reason they're not accepted, you will have time to get them again. Um, but people do come and they drop it here once they're here, here at UT Dallas. Third thing is if you can use an online service like True Copy, and you can, it's a institution to institution service where your institution can send us attested copies, and that's also possible. The uh, la another option is your institution can also, from their official email address, they can send us attested copies to admission at UT Dallas, and we will accept that. We need your resume. We need three letters of recommendation, and one of them should be a professional uh, recommender. Now, professional doesn't mean that you, you should have worked with this person. It just means that it should be somebody who is a working professional. Uh, personal objective statement, your essay, one page, double spaced is OK to tell us why you want to do this degree. There isn't any application fee waiver unless you are a current student or an alum of UT Dallas. Now the application fee is $50. $50 plus in case your undergraduate degree is from a, an institution outside of the US, there is a $50. Uh, foreign credentials evaluation fee. So don't do any kind of evaluation from your side. Just send your uh, degree uh, transcripts to us and we will do the evaluation. So there's a $50 fee for that. Now the regular deadline is May 1st. Let's say you have, want to apply after that. Absolutely, you can apply and we will review your application and you can apply all the way until two weeks, uh, not two weeks, about 10 days for, uh, from the start of the semester. But from May 1st until that time, and that's August that I'm talking about, there is a $75 late fee that you can you'll have to pay. Scholarships and TA ships. Well, as I said, for the flex program, there is a separate application. Everything is due, which means the scholarship essay and your official GRE GMAT score should have reached us by May 1st for fall 22. There is no scholarship for summer 22. TA ships are only available in the second semester. So once you're in your first semester, you can apply for them because we do want you to be here at UTD for one semester. Some numbers from our previous year. We are still working on the new ones for the, for the next year because uh, we're kind of wrapping up our spring, so we'll have the latest numbers very soon. But about again, I wanted to show you about 500 internships with about 360 employers, and you can see that the internet and the IT companies in terms of the uh, you know, the industry that they're going for is just a quarter of all the internships. So which tells you the the need and the breadth of that need when it comes to business analytics. Now, even though a lot of these internships were remote, our students still went to some places to, to work last year despite uh, COVID because there were some relaxations in these places. And uh, generally our students go to all 50 states in the US. The average last summer was $26 and a maximum of, of $105 an hour. That's a lot of money there. So just wanted to show you that, you know, our students definitely are getting those big numbers there. Now there are some firsthand accounts that have, our students have posted about their experience and what they're doing in these internships. And I would strongly recommend to go to UTD MSBA, hashtag UTD MSBA on LinkedIn and read these stories. These are unmoderated first-hand accounts of students. Let's say there is a dream company you want to work for. There you go. You have those stories right there. Lots of student organizations at UT Dallas, about 350 of them, 60 to 70 of them are in the School of Management, but the ones that you see on your screen are some of the prominent ones where we have our students of the Business Analytics program, 
as student leaders. You know, the SAP users group, Salesforce, Project Management Club, Women in Technology, Toastmasters, Cybersecurity, and there are tons of organizations. And again, if you don't have one that interests you and you want to start one, absolutely, that's possible. Now, here is one thing that I wanted to talk about, which is really a deal for our students. We do have some certificate programs as well. And these certificate programs have three to four courses. Most of them are four courses long, and they're very focused on a certain area. So let's say applied machine learning is a certificate. These four uh, courses that are there in this certificate, they're also part of the MSBA degree. What you have to do is, if you complete those four courses, you will have to apply to that certificate program. And because you're a current student, we'll let you be in that program as well. It's it's not the uh, acceptance, the, the whole review is not a very uh, in-depth process because if you're a current student, you know, you're already in a program. So once you get in this applied machine learning certificate program and you do those four courses with an average 3.0 GPA, you get this additional diploma from UT Dallas. So you're getting a degree at the end of the degree program, but this diploma can be received even before you're done with your degree. All you have to do is just complete those four courses. A lot of times students use these certificates when they're looking for internships because they've already earned this diploma. The cost of this certificate is about $20,000. And to a current to a current student who's pursuing a degree, this is free for you. Why this is free? Because let's say one of the classes in this applied machine learning certificate is advanced statistics. That class is also there in the business analytics program. So when you go and take that course, it gives you credit towards your degree program. It gives you credit towards a certificate program. You pay the tuition once and you get the benefit twice. So if you're an out of state student and you wanted to do this degree, you would end up spending $20,000. For Texas residents, it's still $10,000. But because you're a degree seeker and you're in this program, it's free for you. So everybody wants to maximize the value that they're getting of the dollar they are spending and all those one plus one deals. This is exactly that deal. And we have business intelligence and data mining certificate. We have cybersecurity, enterprise systems, healthcare IT. I mean, and these are some of the certificates that our department offers, but the school has additional certificates. So once you come here, I would strongly recommend that you think about which one you want to do. In fact, for a matter of fact, the four courses that, that are there in the applied machine learning certificate, two of them, every business analytics student ends up doing because those are core classes for the degree program. So the way we have carved these certificates out is in a way that, you know, it's not an additional pressure on you to do these if you want to do this. We have made it easy for you to do it. And I wanted to share this with you because I think this is a, a an immense benefit that you can avail once you are here at UTD. And finally, we our contact details my email address and Sylvia's email address and our direct phone numbers. We always welcome uh, questions, but uh, I'll just take a moment to show you the catalog page and then we can jump into your questions. So the six core classes that everybody has to take. Now, the reason why we have these classes in a way is because we want to make sure every analytics student has that foundation that wherever you go, whichever department you work in, you at least have that foundation. Why? Because in any analytics department, you'll be asked three questions. What happened? What will happen? What do you recommend? What happened? Advanced statistics. What will happen? Predictive analytics. What do you recommend? Prescriptive. And that on top of a time series analysis as to over a period of time, you know how things went on and then your database and a foundational course on business analytics that teaches you different models. This is a very tight foundation that any student can get. And I invite you to compare this with other universities. The depth as well as the breadth. And when I talk about breadth, you can look at all these electives. We just talked about the tracks. These are the courses within those tracks. And I mean, you just have to pick six. And here is your list. 
So one of the advantages of being such a big program is that we are able to offer so many electives to you. You decide what you want to do. And you know, most of our students come with a plan that OK, we'll do these courses, we'll take these courses. But once they are in their first semester or second semester, their interest will grow. Definitely it will grow and you know, you will have more options to pick from. So just wanted to show that for a second. Uh, OK, let's jump into your questions right now and please make sure that you're putting that in the chat so that I can go through that. We have enough time, so don't worry, we'll cover. The questions OK, how MSITM and MSBA is different are some of the courses same. So yes, we do share courses sometimes and we do uh, let our students and, and in case there is questions, please put them in the chat. We'll not be unmuting people to let you speak. So we do share courses and in fact, for the business analytics as well. Let's say there is a course that's not there in our catalog and it's offered by the school or even in the university. We let you take up to two courses from outside of the business analytics yeah, degree. For whatever course you want to take. If it's in the School of Management, you don't even need additional approvals. You can sim simply take those courses. Now if I look at MS ITM versus business analytics, ITM is our you know, if you're looking at systems or you're looking at uh, the breadth as to okay, what IT really is, that's where MS ITM comes into picture. However, if you're focused on analytics, if your goal is analytics and you want to deal with things around data and you want to specialize in that, uh, business analytics is the degree for you. It's a very focused degree. And for that matter, you know, we have, let's say, we have a supply chain degree. So if your focus is supply chain, don't go from any other place directly take that degree. If your goal is analytics and you want to do business analytics, take the business analytics degree. So you want to dis make that decision. Do you want to be specialized or do you want to be generalized? And as you grow in your profession or as you take more and more degrees, the idea is to get specialized. So think about what that specialization will be for you. Well, there are people who want to do general IT. Of course, uh, there are uh, the MSITM program is there, but if it if your goal is analytics, the business analytics program is for you. Um, I have an admit from MSBA cohort. Is it possible to switch before enrolling? You can do that. You'll have to apply to the flex program. And uh, what you can also do is just make sure that you uh, send me an email about it. I will send you the steps so you'll have to apply and uh, don't don't pay the hundred dollars again. There is a way through which you can just pay the $50 application fee. In case you paid your cohort fee in the last 90 days, we can try to get your refund there. But you'll have to apply to the Flex program separately. The process might be a little faster this time if you already have another admit because we kind of vetted you, but uh, you still have to apply. So that, that has to happen. Send me an email directly and I'll share the process with you. What's the deadline for Dean's Excellence Scholarship? It's May 1st, so your essay and your scores should reach us by May 1st. Uh, OK, S, I have just answered the same question. Thank you for that question. Uh, OK. How much is the application fee? It's $50, but in case you have uh, your undergrad degree from outside of the US, there is an additional $50 for your foreign credentials evaluation. Uh, I have already applied for MSBA. My seven semester results are out, but the final exam for eighth is not being conducted because of COVID. Now, uh, OK, so what you can do is send an email to JSOM GR Advising. Let them have all your some seven semester results. They will possibly use all of that to process your admit. So if you're just missing one semester results, that should be OK. Any programming language prerequisite? So there is no programming language prereq, but I would say since you are getting into analytics, uh, two of them, R and Python, are the most used ones. So if you want to kind of start some of the basics on your own, and we do boot camps at the beginning, we also have additional opportunities to which you can get trained. I mean, we also give you access to some of these online portals like Coursera, Data Camp, to help you supplement your training. But yes, uh, if you wanted to start something on your own, R and Python is what I would recommend. And maybe some kind of a database language to just get you acquainted with what these 
are. And if you have experience and you've not been working on any of these, just a refresher of this will be enough. In fact, we help our students with some stats related. Uh, I would say Kickstarters before you come to UTD. Those videos that help you with the first few weeks of your stats class, which most of the analytics students take in their first semester. Uh, my application for the flex has been accepted. I want to know if just the. The W2 are enough to uh, procure the I-20. Well, Arvind, you will still have to show your bank statements and all. Because W2s is just about what you have earned, but what the uh, the uh, ISSO wants to see is what are your uh, what do you have right now currently in terms of funds or what is what are the liquid funds available to you? By the way, in the flex program without the scholarship, you have to show. Fifty one thousand dollars to get the I-20 and if you have received a scholarship, then that amount drops to about thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars. Is it necessary that I need some minimum amounts of saving? Not really. Again, what we want to see is the question is, can you pay for your degree? Now you might take a loan and that loan letter is enough to show that you have funds available. When can we get a decision on the Dean's Excellence? Now the decision on Dean's Excellence is provided on a rolling basis. And rolling basis in the sense that every two or three weeks, the committee gets together and they look at what these are uh, the applications now based on the pool. If you make the cut, they will immediately tell you, hey, congratulations, you have your scholarship. If you don't make the cut, then they will put your uh, profile back, your application back into the pool. And then when they, when they come back again after two, three weeks, they will look at whether now do you have a competitive one to get your uh, uh, to get a scholarship. And of course, I mean, this is a logical thing. Every time they come back to the pool, the uh, the requirements are revised. So you know, we always start from the very high requirements and then we slowly and slowly come down to see OK, how our pool is doing. If you don't get a scholarship until say about the first or the second week of May, that's when you'll get a rejection letter saying that, well, we could not give you a scholarship, but until then your name will be put back into the pool over and over again. And there are some students who might have applied in Jan, but they were only able to get the scholarship in April because that's when you know the they the met the competitive requirement as of that time. The estimated tuition for flex program. Now this depends on a lot of factors. Depends on factors like how many uh, credits you're taking because the more credits you take in the flex program, the per credit hour rate goes down. And after 12 credits, any course, any credits that you're taking in the semester. So credit number 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 is the max is all free. You don't pay any tuition for that. So it's capped at 12 credits. Now let's say you get a scholarship and that lets you pay in state tuition rates and you're an out of state tuition uh, st student. The savings is two times there because that 50% reduction in tuition is nothing but the difference between the in state versus out of state tuition. Out of state is up almost two times. So all that can result into different numbers for different people, but depending on what their their situation is. Now you might be a TA for a semester. Uh, one second, I'm hearing some feedback. I just want to make sure people are muted. OK, um, you might become a TA. And if you don't have a scholarship, but you become a TA, TA also qualifies you for instant tuition for that particular semester. So keeping in mind all these different uh, possibilities, you know, you can pay as less as about forty thousand dollars for your overall tuition, or the max could be something between sixty sixty five thousand dollars if the if you never received any support. Uh, what I would recommend is, and let me see if I can find that. You know, we'll put that link in the chat from our YouTube uh, channel where uh, we talked about the financial planning a few weeks ago and we talked about different profiles of our students and how can you fund your degree so um, we'll have that link into the chat in a few in a few minutes okay 
for the bonus certificate, do we have to complete all the courses in the same semester? Oh, no, no, no. You don't have to do everything in one semester. You can do it across multiple semesters. I've received the JSOM Dean scholarship, but I have been asked to enroll in the dual in that case. Will it affect my CPT OPT? It will not because you have the MS program and all your STEM benefits will come from the MS program. The uh, offer is made because they found your application competitive for a dual degree. And by the way, if you whether you have a scholarship or not, I, I would strongly recommend thinking about the dual degree because an MBA plus an MS separately is 89 credits. But when you do it as a dual degree, it's 63 credits only. So you're saving 27 credits, which is almost one full year worth of time and money there. Again, people who have been offered the dual degree, once you come to UT Dallas, they will add the MBA to you. They will issue you a new I-20. All that will happen, but you're not obligated to do it. If you want to drop it after a year, you can absolutely drop it. You can just go about doing your classes as if you're just doing the MS degree. But I would strongly recommend that think about that because 20 years down the line, let's say you are up for an executive position. And one of the things that they're looking for is MBA. At that point of time, you know, you either come back to school and do your MBA again, or, you know, if you have it already, and again, it's a very highly ranked business school. So think about it again. There is no, we are not forcing you to do that dual degree, but we are strongly recommending it. Uh, Anurag, the question was answered about the switching. I'm just going to take the questions which have not been answered in case there are uh, multiple questions of same type. After applying, how much time does it take to get the decision and tuition fees? The tuition fee we just talked about. I'm going to show you a table in just a minute, but uh, it takes about four to six weeks for us to render the decision. But I, what I've been seeing is our department is working pretty fast and they are, the admissions team is kind of rolling it out in like two to three weeks. Now remember, if you ask for a GRE or GMAT waiver, it adds some time. It will take about another week or two for that because we don't look at GRE GMAT waivers every day. We do it, you know, we stack them up and do it on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Uh, Pujita, I will be completing my master's degree in data science integrated and I'm interested in MSBA flags and not if I'm eligible. So uh, Pujita, you might want to send your degree plan and what you have taken to me because uh, the, here is the thing, you can't do the same degree at the same level. So we'll have to see how different is your data science degree and then make a determination if you can do business analytics. Nalam, I got a admit letter and accept the admit for MSBA without scholarship and I'm an international student, I have three doubts. Funds and amount that I should show. OK, so now since you don't have a scholarship, it's 51K, but if you had a scholarship, it would be 36K. Should I send my official undergrad transcripts to apply for it? So undergrad transcripts are not required. Uh, official ones are not required. You can do unofficial ones. And for I-20, you don't have to submit your transcripts. I mean, you have submitted it for your admit. Once you have the admit, that's all you need. For I-20, you need your financial documents. Am I eligible to apply for scholarships without GRE? No, we, we will definitely need the GRE or GMAT. And by the way, I want to also clarify this thing. GRE and GMAT is not the only thing we look at. But we ask for them because that helps us standardize your academic achievement. We need some standard method to look at, OK, how good you are with your academics. I'm going to post a link right now um, into the chat. And this can help you with your. Copy link address. OK, so the tuition rates. And another link I'm going to put you put in the chat is the the financial planning webinar that I did along with our senior associate dean. Dr. I already Howell. put that one in. Oh, you did that? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't see that. Okay. Uh, let me just take you guys to the the tuition page, and the link is there in the chat. But I just want to show you how to interpret our tuition for the flex program. So here is what you have. I'm looking at the variable rate. Uh, so the first thing you have to do is how many credits are you taking in a semester? And let me just make it a little bigger. OK. How many credits are you taking in a semester? Now, as an international student, if you are an international student, you have to at least take nine. If you are a, a domestic student or a resident 
an eligible resident in the US, you don't have that mandate of nine. But let's say you have to take nine credits and nine is what qualifies you for the full time status as well, by the way. The next thing I would look at is the resident and non resident graduate rates. So if you are a resident for nine credits, your tuition is. 7544. The same time, the same tuition for a non resident out of state student is 14626. Now there is an additional fee of $100 per credit hour and depending on how many credits you're enrolled in that is added to it. So let's say for nine, this would become 8444 because another $900 will be added. That's the way you look at your tuition. Health insurance, if you're an international student, you will need health insurance. That's about $1,300. And I'm going to show you those rates as well. So fees and other charges. Health insurance is about $1,340. You can also get it for summer, even though summer is not a mandatory semester to enroll in, unless summer is your first semester. If it's your first semester, you need at least six credits in summer. But this insurance covers you. If you want it for your spouse as well, your dependents, you can do that. The good thing about this insurance is this is uh, this is a top of the line insurance that you have here at UT Dallas. I mean, the coverage is amazing. Another recent thing that happened was if you become a TA, the university will cover this for you. So that is a major benefit that you're getting uh, if you become a TA. Um, other than this, if you're an international student, there is a $150 fee, etc. all those things. So some little miscellaneous charges. But the big ones are your tuition as well as your um, health insurance. Another thing is a lot of times, you know, we get requests, can you send us an estimate? You can always use the tuition estimate tab here and create your own estimate. So let's say graduate, um, just for example, I'm taking non-resident. This will be updated, but let's say if I one fall 21 as soon as the new rates are released and the new rates are not very different it's between two two and a half percent that's the change i want to go with the variable plan now variable plan is it changes every year and the change is about two percent guaranteed means guaranteed is slightly higher than the variable but it never changes until you graduate so what i would recommend is because most of you will end up being here for one and a half two years variable is good for you because it starts at a lower rate and doesn't grow too much to impact you. Um, select your school, I mean Jindal School of Management, and let's say I want 12 credits here. When I submit it, I can see what is the estimate of the whole tuition for 12 credits, and you can see this. I'll change this to 15. The only difference that was there was the supplemental fee of $100. I'll make it 18. Well, it doesn't let you do that beyond 18, but. And you can print this out. And if your bank requires some kind of estimate, this is how you can give it to them. Just to show what the tuition estimate is. I mean, this is a self-service portal. I'm going to put that as also in the chat. OK, just wanted to spend a minute or two on this to show you what exactly this is, because a lot of times we get these questions, but definitely look at the recording that Sevia posted in the chat because that talks about a variety of different profiles that a student can have at UT Dallas. OK, um, I've received a number. How do I proceed? So again, any questions about the cohort program, I would request you to direct that to the cohort program. I can answer questions related to Flex as well as the online program. And it's better that you know you connect with the core program if there's any questions. How can I apply for on-campus part-time jobs? So once you're enrolled at UT Dallas, and enrollments for fall will begin somewhere in June, you can create a profile on a portal called Handshake that we have here where all the on-campus jobs are posted and you can start applying. You can only start working when you're on campus. And you can work for 20 hours a week on campus. In what ways the curriculum will assist us in branding ourselves in competitive job market? So, so that's a great question. One of the things that every student does in the first semester is you take a one credit hour professional development class. 
and that helps you in creating that brand identity through things like LinkedIn. How do you really uh, structure your resume, interview tips and tricks, a lot of pr pr things around your professional development or how, what it takes to be successful in the US job market. And that's what is covered in that one uh, course. But on top of it, the program runs a mentoring program where we have about 30 to 35 mentors who are mostly C-level executives. We connect them to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So let's say you have a mentor who's a CEO for the entire semester, and you talk to this person once a week. That's the commitment that they give you. And you know, again, if you are friends with the CEO, your mentor is a CEO. I mean, they are there to help you with potentially every possible thing in terms of branding, in terms of networking, in terms of making connections. In fact, a lot of them, I mean, kind of become family with them. They go out on you know, for uh, football games and they, they visit their families during Thanksgiving. They drive them around to events. So it's a, it's a great way for you to do that. And that's just one way. Another thing is we, we make sure that you get enough face time with employers who will bring on to campus. See, here is what I would say. We have a zillion ways through which you can be supported. The question that goes back is how committed are you to make use of those opportunities. And that's the, the differentiator. Now you will be busy with your assignments and your classes and stuff, but you have to remember you're here for a short period of time and there is unlimited exposure that you can get in that short period of time. There's some people who take, you know, who make use of every possible opportunity. They do well. There are people who want to be selective. They also do well. Whatever fits you, as I said uh, initially, we are very flexible. We don't want to uh, force you to do something, but we'll make sure that you have those uh, those uh, opportunities. One thing I can guarantee you, no student ever can say this in our program and has never said it, that we didn't have enough opportunities. And that that is a promise that we make to all our students that we'll make sure that you get those. Is there a test waiver, GRE GMAT? Yes, once you've applied, you can just simply email jsomgradvising at utdallas.edu and you can get that. Uh, August, you're the seven semester guy. OK, I like the way you put that. It's admission at utdallas.edu. Oh, sorry, not admission. jsomgradvising at utdallas.edu. Just send them your seven semesters and they will be OK. To take care of your thing. OK, what are the questions uh, there? I have an undergrad in marketing from India. I have four years of work experience or switch to analytics and group grade from a non stem. How likely will I get in if I have a low GPA? Well, Harsh, we look at your entire application holistically. We'll, we know that there is no one thing that can build your profile and no one thing that can you know, pull you down. So we look at everything. We look at your experience. We look at what courses you have taken. Let's say your overall, overall GPA is low. We even look at what caused that GPA to be low. What courses? Maybe you were good in courses that apply to business analytics, and you will be able to do well. You know, it was just some other some of some type of courses that were not so good. Um, you know, life events can happen. Let's say you had a bad semester and your GPA dropped so low that you were not able to pick it up. But then we looked at your trajectory and it was kind of going up. And that's that's OK for us. So again, there is no minimum. That's why we don't say there's a minimum requirement because there is no minimum. Everybody is unique. Every profile is unique. So don't worry on that. And just to add, some of our best students are ones who have no CSIT background because they feel that they have to put in more effort because they have to do better. And guess what? The more effort you put, the better results you get. And that even applies to people with ITCS background as well, because I mean, it, it see at the end of the day, it's just the effort that you will put it into this that will get you results. Yes, sometimes you will feel that this is this is too much and this is difficult, but you know what? If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And at the same time, the big bucks that our students earn, you don't get paid for easy stuff, that kind of money. So you are actually getting into a very niche area that can help an organization make those additional millions and billions of dollars that they are missing out on. So for that, the training has to be rigorous so that when you go out, and, and this is one thing I say with a lot of pride as well as confidence, our students can go and become independent contributors. 
And that's a big thing to say because you don't have to be reliant on somebody else to help you with your job. You yourself are skilled enough to go and do what is required when it comes to analytics. And we will help you with that training. Um, and my IELTS will expire before the date I submit the application. Will I be eligible for an admission consideration? Um, and if it is. If it is kind of close, go ahead with that uh, application right now. You know, at least make sure that you have your application submitted. Um, in case there is something missing, you can always add it later so that by the time you hit that submit button, your score was uh, uh, valid. Another thing is, and there is a list of countries that I'm going to post here, um, English proficiency. So if you are part of any of these countries, and I know we added a few countries very recently like India, if you are part of any of these countries, 46 different countries, you don't need an IELTS or English proficiency score. I'm going to post the link right here. It's waved off for you. Do I need to submit the LORs again or swap the program? No, uh, Anurag, if you are submitting an application for Flex and you already did it for cohort, no new documents are needed. We just need an application. We'll reuse any of the documents that you submitted. OK, the next one also I'm just going to. I think we have talked about it. Can I use three professionals as recommenders? Brian, that should be OK. Yes. Is there any introduction? Yeah, that's take before the start of the program. Oh, I'm hearing feedback. I'm going to mute people here. OK. Kind of getting to the close of the questions, so just bear with me for a few more minutes. Any introductory course I can take before that would help me towards the credit of the program. Now, uh, such in any courses that count towards a degree are taken when you are here at UDD. But you can definitely take some courses, as I said, introductory courses to R, Python, any SQL stats to just help yourself kind of get into that mode of studying here. We will help you with some of those before you come here, and there will be some boot camps at the very beginning of the semester that will help you as well. But you cannot take another course and count it towards the degree. Uh, as I said, any questions, please go ahead and just put them in the chat. Um, we will take those questions for sure. I have sent my attested degree certificate and transcripts from India. I request you to send a mail, a yeah, mail once the university. Well, once the university receives it, your to-do list will be updated, saying that those were received. So that's the way to know. Uh, Kriti, is a loan sanction letter from the bank enough for I-20? Well, if it covers the amount, absolutely. Um, I'm an undergraduate, got an admit for fall 22, but my university's academic schedule was delayed. My final semesters will be completed by uh, August 2nd and results might be out in September. Can I enroll? Well, uh, Krishna, anybody who starts with us will have to complete their undergrad degree before coming to UTD. So in case it is going to be all the way until September, um, you might want to just. I mean, uh, do one thing. You need to complete your undergrad degree before or you need to have your degree or some kind of a proof that you have completed your degree before you start classes. In case if it is getting delayed, uh, we can always defer your admission to another semester. And by the way, you can defer your admission by, uh, in an entire academic year if required. How much deposit we need to pay to? There is no seat fee. There are several institutions that ask you to do that. We don't. Do we have to submit original GRE score right now before admission? So originals are required for your actual from the, e, the website. ETS is required for scholarship purposes. We will need your official GRE GMAT ones, but for the admission purposes right now, if you just want to start with your unofficial scorecard, that's also OK. But yes, we would need you to send your official ones to us. How is the weather in Dallas? Well, it's like a, it's, it's a weather powerball that we play every day. You know, it could be very cold. It can get very hot, but generally, you know, summer months, which is May, June, it, it, it's hot. It's topical weather. It's not very cold. You will. We we just got our snow for like two days, and that's it. Just two days. It was just uh, less than what, uh, maybe an inch. So we are not like Chicago, or we're not like those places where you're submerged under snow. We the the weather is nice. You know, you might see all four seasons in one day. 
But the thing, the best thing about it, it's very bearable weather. It doesn't stop you much. Well, when we had our snow last week, you know, the roads got icy. We shut the university down, but that's like one day or two days in the entire year. Does the insurance outside of the university work? It will work. If you can sh demonstrate that it has the same coverage as the university's insurance, we will waive it off for you. But there is a waiver process. Uh, the forms are available on the student uh, health center website. But you have to show the same coverage. But my recommendation is if the insurance amount is not too different, go with UT Dallas as one because UT Dallas has great coverage there for you. Um, what is the diversity ratio like? Well, I, you know, Ibrahim, I, I really like that you asked that question because here is, here is the data point from where I want to go. The average in the industry is 73.7. Again, I'm hearing some feedback. Let me mute everybody. OK, the industry average is about 73.27. The average in academia is 80.20 when we talk about STEM. But here in our program, we're kind of 55.45 when it comes to the, uh, the gender ratio. In terms of diversity, we have students at UT Dallas from more than 100 countries that come and do it here. At the graduate level, definitely we have a lot of international students because most of the international students are the ones that kind of spend time for a graduate degree, a master's degree. But in that also, we have at least 25 different countries that are represented in the program. So there's definitely a lot of diversity and all of these students, whether they are domestic or they're international, they have their own community groups as well, you know, student organizations. So let's say if you're coming from, let me take um, Iran, you have an Iranian Students Association. You come from India, you have an Indian Students Association. You have, you come from China, there's a Chinese student, Taiwanese students, and all of these people, they, they celebrate festivals, you know, like the way you would do it in your own country, even with the domestics. And here is what I feel about UT Dallas. It's a melting pot. You know, as much as we want to experience students from, you know, from within the US, even the US students, the domestic students, like the fact that they're able to experience cultures from all over the world because students come down to UT Dallas. And it's just not UT Dallas. The, the Dallas Fort Worth Metroflex is like that. I mean, you come from Poland, you've got Pol Polish restaurants, you have Pol Polish uh, communities out here that can help you with what you want. You know, there are very thriving Czech communities, Irish Americans, you know, we've got people from the UK, Australia, New Zealand. I mean, you will find a place here and that's what I like about Dallas. And because Dallas is like that, UT Dallas is a, um, uh, it's a multi-flavor university right here. Can we choose any course we like or are we limited? So you can choose anything that you would like to have. The only thing is you need to make sure that you take the core classes and then any electives that are out there and in any combination possible. You don't have to do it in a certain, uh, you know, in a certain way that only these courses have to be done first and the others have to be taken later on. You can mix and match the way you want. The only thing you have to th take care is if there is a prerequisite, you have to take that course before you take the actual advanced course. How much time do we have for submitting our certificates if you don't receive before coming to UTD? Now, if you cannot do the official ones before coming to UTD, you can always request extension and they'll give it to you until the first end of first semester. So before you enroll into your second semester, you need to have your official documents with us. Process to apply. Good question. We talked about the nine yards, but we didn't talk about the process to apply. I mean, we did talk about the application requirements, but here is the link that I'm going to put here in the chat for you all. I know we are at the top of the hour, so we'll have to kind of wrap it up quickly, but I think we have a few questions left only. Should we provide undergraduate official transcript once we've got admission or can we submit it later? You can submit it later. We all will need unofficial, unofficial ones to process your admit. I'm changing from code to flex. Do I need to reapply for JSOM? So yes, when you get into the flex program, there is a separate application for uh, scholarship and I'm going to post the scholarship link here as well in a second. Scholarships are. 
deadline for accepting admit. There isn't a hard deadline. You have to do it before start of classes, of course. But remember, once you accept it, you know, if you're applying for scholarships, you want you to accept it once uh, and there is no fee and all. Remember that, but do it as soon as you have made up your mind that you're coming to UT Dallas, but you need to do it before your classes. Is it possible to enroll for dual degree once I reach UTD? Absolutely, you can do that. Will I still be eligible for THG if I get Dean's scholarship now? We try to spread the benefit out to as many students as possible. Uh, if you get the Dean's Excellence Scholarship for a particular semester, we try not to go for you as a TA because you know we want to make sure that more students can be helped. But there is no hard and fast rule. If if you are the only person who's eligible for a particular role that we have there, and again, TAGAs are not academic rewards. These are jobs that we are hiring you for. So if you are the only candidate and you have a, a you know, sc scholarship and we, you're the only one that we can go with, we will hire you. Uh, Cyrus, I have a undergraduate degree from 20 years ago. Do I apply? Do I have to take the GRE to apply? Absolutely, you will have to. But if you want to go for a GRE waiver, you can submit that too. How can I get tech, uh, Texas residency for tuition purposes? So, Doc, if you if you are on the F1 visa, you cannot get Texas residency unless you are a TA or you have received a scholarship for that particular semester. However, if you are on a work visa or you are a USPR or you are you, you can you can even be a US citizen. You know, you may have moved from California. You need to spend 12 months in Texas to get that Texas residency. Um, what are the factors important to get after the first year? Now, after the first year, it's your academic performance at UTD. There's a Dean's Excellence for Continuing Student, which looks at your GPA mostly. There's a Dean's Impact Scholarship as well, where we look at everything that you have done in the school. And there are a lot of donor scholarships also that open up for continuing students. I've received my admit. I had a question regarding the medical requirements, uh, the meningitis. So if you are 22 before, after before starting the program, then you don't need the meningitis vaccine. If you're lesser than 22 years of age before starting the program, uh, at, at the time of starting the program, I'm sorry, you will need the vaccine. And, uh, and you don't need vaccines for I-20 purposes, by the way. Above 22, no. If you're above 22, you're good. You will definitely need a TB test once you come here. What kind of financial aid is available? So our scholarships, the Dean's Excellence Scholarship is the number one thing. Um, after that, as continuing students, sometimes we have need-based scholarships as well. You know, if you are facing a hardship, you can apply. And case-to-case -case basis, the university provides that. What's the intake for our fall? So generally in fall, we get three to 400 students. Spring is about 100 to 200 students, and summer is 20 to 30. And we have a billion classes that you can take. Uh, I have... Oh, my email ID is .shaker at udallas.edu. There you go. How can you apply? So the last two questions. How can you apply for RA? Oh, well, uh, a master's student generally is a TA. Uh, we have a scholar. We have a TA portal on which you can apply. Once you're here, what's the average profile that you look for? So we look at everything. We look at you know your scholarly performance, we look at your GRE GMAT, we look at your essay. Your essay is important, you know, and don't just write in your essay that it, this will help me financially. I mean, logically, any scholarship will help 100% of the people financially. So that isn't telling us much. Talk about how after you get a scholarship, will that help you with your academic pursuits? And that's what you need to know. Now, um, there's, I can show, give you the, uh, the TA link, but you won't be able to, uh, your application won't be considered at all. So once you are here at UT Dallas at that point of time, we can uh, share with you what all these details are. These are all second semester things. They are not, you can't become a TA in your very first semester. And we do send emails regularly whenever the portal is open for TA applications so that you know you are aware of it. What is the right time to sign the Prodigy Finance Loan? You can do it now. If you've got the admit, go ahead and get it because that loan letter will help you get your scholarships as well. OK, that was all the questions that we had. So thank you so much. Another thing is once you uh, are done applying, and in fact, you know what, let me share this with you. 
Um, we have a Telegram group on which we answer a lot of questions. I'm just trying to get hold of that very quickly. OK, there you go. So if you are in the Flex program, and this is strictly for the Flex questions, if you have a question, we have a Telegram group as well. Please join us and your questions will be answered. And we have a lot of people out there asking tons of different questions. So you don't have to wait for webinars to ask your questions. You can ask right there. And we're pretty active. We try to answer them within a couple of days. Sometimes questions come in and you know within a few minutes you have a response. So do join us there. We are happy that you were here this morning here with us. It was a little dewy since somebody asked about the weather. We also get some dew and fog sometimes, but as I said, it's a topical weather and it's 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 a comfortable weather that you will it will not be very hard pressed with because of the way it is. But looking forward to having you all at UT Dallas and please let us know if you have any questions. The recording will be available. We'll send a link out to you in a couple of days. Uh, thank you so much for all your questions. We are excited that you would you have thought of us as a potential option for your future degree. Thank you everybody and have a very good weekend. I will talk to you soon.